Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, distributor webinar on what's new with T4D control version six. Uh, my name is Riley Smith. I'm a market manager for the monitoring group at Trimble Geospatial, and joining me is Christian. Hi. Hello, everybody. My name is Christian Abenschein. I'm software product manager um, responsible for T4D setup M1 and Trimble access monitoring. Perfect. And today we're going to be talking about what's coming new with uh, the latest and greatest version of Trimble T4D control. Uh, if there's any issues or if you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to put them in the chat window and uh, we'll get to them as we go along. But uh, if you have any issues with being able to see the presentation or hear us, just let us know so we can make sure there's no te technical difficulties. All right. And with that, we'll get into the webinar. So the agenda for today, we'll go over an overview of Trimble monitoring. We're some some information that a lot of you might be familiar with but wanting to cover it nonetheless to define what monitoring is in in terms of our vision from the Trimble perspective the the customer segments and industries that we look at and focus on and then as well uh, team updates uh, on the monitor, Trimble monitoring side and then we'll go into the overview of version 6 of T40 uh, where Christian will take us through the new features as well as the new three-tier addition structure and term subscription and new part numbers and ordering that go along with that and then at towards the end we'll talk about some new marketing resources available to you and then we'll finish up the presentation with a question and answer session so if you do have any questions put them in the chat window and we'll get to them at the end as well all right so dump jumping into an overview you've probably seen this slide before if you've attended a, a previous uh, webinar on monitoring. Really, when when it comes down to it, we're connecting those two pieces of movement, 3D position and time, so the temporal element, and that's how we define monitoring. It's all about measuring that change over time, usually on an object or a surface uh, on the earth. And T4D really is that core platform that sits at the center of monitoring. When we talk about monitoring, we focus mainly on four segments, industry segments. The first being transportation infrastructure. So here are some great project examples of, of road and rail and tunnel projects where monitoring solutions are being used to monitor that critical infrastructure, whether it's on the, this, the HS2, which is, is kind of a high project uh, on the list lately, but others all around the world in Italy, Switzerland, and the US. The next in building and structure, so looking at the anything from uh, historical features like on the on the right there in Barcelona, or just standard structures like the parking garage image below, of understanding how those those uh, objects are moving or deforming over time. And then the third is dams and mining. So these are large structures typically monitored o over a, a very long period of time, usually five plus years, where we're looking at how that structure deforms uh, relative to that large surface area using, typically using a combination of geotechnical, GNSS, and total station sensors. And then the last category, is landslides and natural hazards. This is more about measuring the earth and its movements as opposed to a specific object and understanding how the, you know, let's say for example, a slope is moving over time. Now a update on the team. So not really any substantial changes. We still have Boris Skopjak as uh, heading as the marketing director for the monitoring team. And then as Christian mentioned, he's the product manager heading up the T4D uh, setup M1 integration and Trimble access monitoring. Uh, myself, um, the newest addition to the team, 
of filling in the role as market manager for monitoring uh, as well as some of your familiar working with me on the tunneling side which I will still be focusing on as well and then from uh, more on the hardware product management side we have Derek Shanks and Andrew Salmon and then when we switch over to the engineering team Ralph is uh, still leading that team strong and uh, building the great products that you all know and love and then Christopher on the customer support side of things with that team as well. So looking at an overview of what uh, this version of T4D brings. So the message that, that we have for version six is this three tiered edition, opening the door for more surveying and monitoring service providers to offer uh, monitoring solutions to their customers. So the idea is being able to take T4D and, and the hardware and bring it to a larger audience, whether that's new or existing customers and being more flexible on how they deploy it on projects. The target release date for T4D version six is July 14th. And so mark your calendars and available, it will be for, available for download both on survey partners as well as our new uh, Trimble monitoring website, which we'll talk a little bit more later on in the pre presentation. And goal is to target not just existing customers, but as well new monitoring customers, especially those who may have not been, a, been uh, who have not put their feet into the water, so to speak, on monitoring and are interested in deploying on projects. So really, we we look at that in a few different main capabilities. So first being streamlined integration with third-party packages. So this typically is with the geotechnical sensors uh, and, and how we improve that. And Christian will go into more detail on these specific capabilities. Um, but also at this three-tiered addition offering and simplified deployment. So making T4D easier and, and more, um, more attractive to new users to deploy on monitoring projects. And then as well with the subscription, three month and one year time duration offering where we're giving flexibility on how you deploy three, uh, T4D on a project. All right, so with that, I'm going to kick it over to Christian, who's going to give us a deep dive on the new features in T4D version 6. Thanks, Riley. All right, so then um, I will start with um, with uh, showing you the new features of T4D version 6.0. Um, so we will introduce a new module that is called um, Coordinate Export. Um, the coordinate export allows you to output process coordinates of, of targets. So it basically applies to total station data. And um, you can also schedule an FTP upload. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, you can also archive the, the exported information if needed. Um, why, why have we done that? Um, because there are, there are customers out there that use T4D for for the sole purpose of, of processing total station data and um, yeah, outputting the resulting coordinates of the targets. And this feature just makes it easier to, to make the data available and, and that way to integrate with third-party products. Um, so you see here on, on, on the slide, there is a new module called Coordinate export if you if you look at the properties of this new module so there will be um, <clears throat> there will be some property fields um, that allow you to select the points you would actually like to export so basically um, what you will do in here is you you would select the integrity monitor modules and um, yeah and thus the points um, <clears throat> apart from that um, Further beneath, there is also a section where you can where you can um, where you can um, configure your scheduler settings. So you just um, type in um, the FTP server connection details, the FTP server of your choice, the credentials, for example, and also the upload interval. So basically, um, you schedule 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 the upload, um, <clears throat> and then. Um, once once this is configured, basically the module listens for for new events or basically for new round measurements that, that are coming in, 
And in case there is a new round measurement available, um, the module outputs the coordinates in a CSV file. Um, here's an example. You could see um, there were three integrity monitors selected beforehand, and that's why you see the data for, for the three modules in the CSV file. All right, um, so that's one uh, new feature. Then what else um, is in the new version? Um, um, probably, or a lot of you probably know about the custom view functionality in T4D already, which is uh, used for context visualization. So here you can, for example, upload images. You can drag and drop your sensors on that image. And um, yeah, you can also visualize information, um, um, for example, on the latest sensor readings, like um, a displacement uh, chart or a scatter plot. Or like in this example here, you can just show the latest readings, right? And with version 6.0, um, it is now also possible to have a video stream as a as a background layer. So not, not just a static image, but also a live video stream. Um, but it's the same, still the same uh, functionality that you can use also with the video stream. So you can also drag and drop the sensor icons on top of the video stream. And um, as you can imagine, of course, this enhances the context visualization that I mentioned. And um, <clears throat> so the, the custom view can also be can also be added to a, a composite view, which basically means you can make this um, live stream available to the public using a public URL via the composite view. Um, apart from that, so there is also um, a new feature related to the uh, setup M1. So um, the setup M1 is our recommended way of communicating to, to total stations. Um, it controls the total stations and, and provides the, the required information. And we have now added a, um, a setup M1 diagnostic feature. And this diagnostic feature allows you to uh, remotely check the health status of your setup M1. So it starts um, like with a check on the on the on the um, availability of the setup M1 if it is reachable, for example. And um, so why 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 we have done this? Um, um, today the situation is we we always need to ask for a lot of information. Our support team needs to ask for a lot of information until we have everything together to to come to. Uh, or that we can even start analyzing what went wrong, right? And um, so, of course, this causes a delay and, and makes um, the situation worse as it is actually. And um, so with this feature, um, we, we will definitely improve um, the customer experience. Um, you, can, you can do a diagnostics yourself. And um, um, if, you, if you see on the next slide, um, there is um, so if you if you launch if you launch the uh, diagnostics feature, um, you just do um, a right click on the data receiver module, and you say set up M1 diagnostics, and then um, the feature runs a lot of different checks. Um, um, so you see that here, um, there are a couple of uh, green, yellow, and red dots. So in case um, the check is successful for this um, particular description um, that you can see here or this particular check and um, the icon is green and um, but in case um, something is not successful um, um, this feature also provides um, suggestions how you can fix it right um, so this might um, bring our customers into the situation that you can just um, fix the situation or the issue yourself, right? Um, because sometimes it's really um, <clears throat> easy things like um, that the active project of the setup M1 is not selected at the data receiver module, things like that. Um, but um, I mean, if it still requires our um, support team to get involved um, based on this information, um, um, we can also um, categorize um, the issue much better and thus find a solution much quicker. So this is a really um, powerful new feature. Okay, um, apart from that, um, we 
we put a lot of efforts into the uh, integration with uh, geotechnical data providers. Um, so, I mean, we have already put a lot of efforts into it with version 5.0, but now we have, we have uh, for example, expanded um, the um, support for uh, Sensive. So with version 6.0, um, T4D can now read in all kind of, of connected um, sensors, sensors that are connected to the Sensive gateway. And uh, not only the ones that are listed here, because that was the situation with 5.0. Um, and I mean, the reason for this, the benefits are quite obvious, I think, um, because um, basically the, the Geotech gateway integration we have introduced with version 5.0 is, is, um, is ju just much easier than the file-based workflow that um, has been and still is in T4D since years. Um, but of course, um, if there are sensor types that cannot be read in by T4D, um, um you you must still stick to the to the uh, file based workflow and with this enhancement this is just not required anymore and um yeah this basically completes our solution in this context um <clears throat> so talking about the uh, geotech gateway integration um also regarding load sensing we have we have um we have added some improvement. We have a new feature, which is part of version 6.0. And um, there will be a new connection type that allows you to connect to a load sensing gateway that is in your local network. And um, so we had we had several customers asking for this. Um, and this, um, this is actually the requirement if your setup M1 is not connected to the public internet, right? So if you connect your setup M1 to your to your LAN, to your to your local network, um, there was there was no way uh, so far to really connect to the setup M1. And now with this additional new connection type, um, it's just a, a smooth workflow, and you can you can also run the M1 in your local network. And um, Another new feature that basically um, applies to the Geotech uh, gateway um, providers. So basically, in this is a, it applies to both to load sensing and to Sensive. Um, so we have now also added um, support for um, uh, the calculation sensor, which means you can now also use the Geotech gateway sensors as input sensors for. Um, for calculating additional information like um, distances between two prisms or tilt information, for example. So this is now also possible based on the um, on the Geotech gateway sensors, and of course um, this makes your your project or make, makes the use of T4D way more flexible. Um, so I think. Um, these were the main key, new key features. Um, of course, there are a lot of uh, more additional enhancements uh, we have we have um, added to version 6.0. So for example, um, uh, we got user requests that the uh, zoom level at our maps page um, is not sufficient. So we have, we have reworked this one. Um, and now there is an increased zoom level. Um, I think the zoom level is now uh, 20 instead of 17 as it used to be before. Um, this applies to Microsoft Bing and to Google Maps um, when you use them as the background um, layer. And it basically provides you um, yeah, to see more details, de details with a better resolution. Um, another thing we have added is, um, or we have changed basically, the uh, IPI chart, in-place inclinometer chart, um, as you might know. So in, in, in the web application of T4D, uh, this um, so far was a, uh, yeah, had its own area, and we have just um, integrated the uh, IPI chart into the regular chart section, because it is basically a chart and, um, it just uh, streamlines the workflows here as well. And um, the large data set chart. So this is this is really um, this is really nice uh, because um, also here a lot of customer requests. Or in the past, um, if you created an analysis um, with a lot of different uh, sensors and then you wanted to visualize the chart, 
uh, you could easily run into a point limitation of 50,000 points and then you would then you would see a message in T4D web that says a uh, point limit is reached. Um, please reduce the number of your sensors or change the density, for example. Um, with this new um, way of charting the data, um, yeah, you can also chart data with a, a bigger number. So the limitation is gone now. And um, unit per mile, just another, uh, per mil, sorry, unit per mil, um, another example. So this was a request here um, from, from Alna, from Europe, for example. Um, so we have also added this one, um, which um, allows Alna um, in this example to, to better comply with, um, with local standards or basically with the project requirements. All right, so these were, as I said, the main new key features and um, some additional enhancements. I mean, there are still more. We have we have also um, some bug fixes in there, etc. But um, I think these were the, the key messages um, you should be aware of in terms of version 6.0. Um, all right. So now let's let's have a look at the three tier additions and the termed uh, subscriptions. So what we have changed or wh what we are going to change with uh, with the new version shortly. So at the moment, um, the current licensing structure basically looks as you can see here, you have T4D base, and on top of T4D base, you can add different components, uh, terrestrial for total station data, GNSS and geotech. And again, on, on top of those, uh, those you can add um, additional sensor nodes, right? So this, um, this is probably nothing new um, for those of you who have not dealt with monitoring so far. So this is the current structure. Um, now that you could see it, you can forget about it again because it will completely change with version 6.0. Um, this is on the next slide. Um, so with version 6.0, how we sell T4D um, um, is, is the following. So there will be three different um, tiers or software editions available, T4D field, T4D intermediate, and T4D advanced. Um, so there is no T4D base anymore. Um, T4D field um, covers uh, total station support and includes one total station node. Um, on top of this, um, with T4D intermediate, um, there is a GNSS support. And on top of this, in turn, there is um, uh, geotech support when it comes to T4D advanced. Um, as you see, for all the different editions, there are nodes included by default. Um, one, one comment on T4D advanced. Um, so by default, there are five geotech sensor nodes included and not just one as it is with total stations and GNSS. Okay, so these are the, the additions. And now um, if you look at, um, or if you think about timed licenses, so for, for all of the three additions, we have, or we will also introduce um, timed licenses, um, three months, one year, next to the perpetual licenses that, that have already been existing and that will continue to exist in the future. Um, this is just because we want, um, to offer our customers more flexibility um, and make T4D um, easier to access, basically, right? So um, if you think about um, a short-term project of just uh, three months, um, yeah, I mean, the, the three-month license um, is suitable and you don't need a perpetual license, right? Okay, um, so let's have a closer look on the different tiers, because um, I think there are still some important information I would like to share with you. Um, so if you look at, at this slide, um, it's kind of the same information as what you could see on the previous slide. So again, field is about uh, terrestrial data, intermediate also supports GNSS and advanced um, geotech. Um, so, but there are also um, some features um, that are related to total station data, which are not supported in T4D field. And this is, for example, um, a manual upload of, of job XML files from Drumble Access Monitoring and also network adjustment of multiple total stations. So this is not part of T4D field, right? And um, 
one comment on the um, advanced tier. Um, we see the, the, the horizontal bar on the top. So this is about the web application. So the web application will be part of T4D advanced, but not part of T4D field and T4D intermediate. And there is one more thing um, I would like to mention here. Um, you, you can see this uh, vertical line um, where it says data storage on top. Data storage basically refers to a uh, Microsoft SQL uh, server database. So um, this means um, only as of T4D intermediate um, data will be stored. This means there is no data storage available with T4D field. I mean, that's something you should be aware of. Right. And um, so again, <clears throat> if you if you look at um, um, maybe one slide back. Yeah. So if you T4D field, uh, total station support, data processing, but no network adjustment. And in here, you will also find this uh, new functionality I have I have just mentioned, the new module, the coordinate export module. Right. Um, you see that's that's how we. Um, referred to or are referring to as a smart sensor because you basically connect to your total station, you process the data and you output the reduced coordinates. So this is kind of a smart smart sensor in a way. Um, regarding T4D intermediate, um, so from a functionality point of view, so on top of T4D field here also network adjustment for total station data is supported. And as GNSS and terrestrial is part of intermediate, um, it also supports the uh, integrated processing, which means um, uh, the combined processing of total station data and GNSS data, and the uh, manual upload of, of job XML files for, for manual uh, monitoring uh, projects. So this is also part of, of T4D intermediate, right? And um, as I already said, so with uh, T4D Advanced, um, there comes the web application next to geotechnical support on top, which allows you to manage your data, to compute the data, uh, to do the visualization, the analysis, um, alarming reporting. So um, yeah, a lot of features that are available and that come with the web application of T4D. All right. so. If we now um, think about um, the three tiers from a different angle again, so of course we have we had a lot of thoughts um, around the different additions uh, that we are going to introduce with this new version, and basically every edition addresses a different level of this uh, customer pyramid you see here. So T4D field um, is for is for the customers basically. Um, yeah, they do not use T4D as their main monitoring system or software, let's say, um, but still run T4D to output coordinates. Um, this is what we are referring to or what is referred to here as the monitoring service providers. Um, we had some and we still have some projects like um, the Grand Paris project or um, a major project in Melbourne, for example, where T4D is basically used that way, right? And um, as already mentioned, T4D field supports the new coordinate export feature. And um, uh, using T4D field together with this new feature, we are very confident that this will, that this will save time and money. Um, <clears throat> looking again at T4D intermediate, um, so T4D intermediate um, will basically be sold to customers who are who are only or mainly interested in time series. I mentioned earlier that only as of T into, T4D intermediate, um, we store data in a, in a SQL database. So um, um, these customers um, will most likely develop their own visualization and analysis user interface, like a web application. Um, and um, yeah, but still um, T4D intermediate supports um, total stations, GNSS, integrated processing, and um, this is the type of customer um, we have in mind for the intermediate edition. T4D um, advanced, so um, 
this is basically where the full T4D applies, uh, the full T4D uh, capabilities, and this um, applies to basically every one of the pyramid that uh, prefer to use T4D as a as a complete package, as as the complete monitoring solution. Um, and it applies especially to customers that that um, are looking to get into into automated monitoring and um, that are currently doing mainly campaign based or manual monitoring right so this is the bottom of the pyramid the survey service providers with maybe just one or two up to five total stations something like that so this is this is um where t4d advanced especially applies to right um so for the existing customers um um, an information on this slide. So, so existing customers that are still under warranty, um, they can upgrade from T4D version 5.0 to T4D um, version 6.0 advanced. Um, so here is an example. Um, if you are, for example, running on version 5.0 and you have um, you have just one total station, that means you have T4D base, you have the terrestrial component and maybe one additional total station and then you do an upgrade to version 6.0 and um, you suddenly not just have support for this one total station but also for one GNSS receiver and for five geotechnical sensors right so um, this is just it's it's a good update I would say because you have way more functionality available suddenly um, next to what you already had available of course and um, so as I said, every customer who is on a previous version of T4D is allowed to update to T4D advanced. Um, there is just this one requirement. Uh, the customer must be um, under a valid support and maintenance agreement um, that, has, um, that is running um, at least until July 1st, 2020. Okay, um, and then, um, the part numbers and the ordering process. So, what is what is going to change in this in this regard? Mm -hmm. um, so, if you think um, if you think again about the uh, the different T4D editions now from a part number perspective or a part number angle, so to say. Um, so, here is a list of all available part numbers. You see, there are three uh, categories basically: it's T4D field, it's T4D intermediate, and T4D advanced again. And for every for every section for every category, um, there will be um, um, part numbers available for a one-year license and a three-month license next to the perpetual license. Um, you also see the price points here in the right column. This is um, list prices in US dollars. Um, on the next slide. Um, it contains the information we were just looking at. Um, so if you if you look at T4D advanced, intermediate, and field, um, um, so the left side of of this uh, overview is pretty much the same prices as you could just see here, and the same information. Um, but it also includes um, the sensor node prices. So we will still have um, the possibility, or we will still offer the possibility to add total station nodes, non-trimble total station nodes, same for GNSS receivers. And um, yeah, there's just a difference in terms of geotechnical sensors. So here we, here um, there will be um, uh, buckets available consisting of five nodes, 50 nodes and 200 nodes. Uh, so this is a bit different uh, than it used to be in the past or up to now we have a volume discount for geotechnical sensors available but um, this is going away shortly. So this is the new structure and um, and um, you might also recognize that we have not only different price points uh, for the uh, additions depending on the length of the license, perpetual one year or three months, but there are also different price points for the sensor nodes, right? Um, yeah, maybe okay. one word on the on the was there a question? Yeah, so I think you've answered it already, but just to clarify, so William asked sure. regarding this the new three tier edition structure, 
with, for example, T4D field with the one total station node that's included, are, are, is a user able to add additional nodes? Uh, in this case, absolutely, with T4D, absolutely. it would be total station, right? Absolutely, yes. So, um, so William, you said, had a question. So, William, I don't know which William now, but it doesn't matter. So, William, you can still add additional total stations also after the upgrade, of course. And that's pretty much what you can see here. Um, so it's um, in the middle, you see there's um, uh, one total station node. So assuming you are an existing, you have an existing uh, customer who does an upgrade to T4D Advanced Perpetual. Um, um, yeah, there is this perpetual horizontal line and and um, yeah, the price point for one additional total station node. So this is still possible, of course, yes. Same as it used to be, right? We're still scalable in this regard. Is there, Riley, I'm not sure are there any more questions on this slide because there's there, one thing I still want to mention. Oh, sure, yeah, there is uh, some more questions, but I think we'll wait a little bit to answer them because I think you will you will answer them in the next few slides. Okay, sounds good, thanks. Uh, so yeah, there is one thing I still want to mention um, to support and maintenance. Um, it will be included for the one-year license and for the three-month license and for the perpetual license, It's it's pretty much the same as it used to be so far. So one year of, of support and maintenance is included. And um, then we have still the um, extended warranty reinstatement and loyalty part numbers available. And this is, uh, this is coming in a minute on one of the next slides in more detail. Okay, um, so on the next slide, um, this is, this is um, an information that um, in particular, uh, focuses on the uh, sensor node part numbers. So also here we will have an update. Um, on the left side, you see the part numbers that are currently in place, that are currently applicable to T4D. Um, we have sensor node part numbers for total stations, GNSS and Geotech, of course. And um, so all of them, they will be discontinued together with the release of version 6.0 and will be replaced by the part numbers that you see on the right side of the slides. So basically, um, um, they will be replaced by the uh, perpetual sensor nodes, right? Because, I mean, so far, these were also perpetual sensor nodes, and so it just makes sense to, um, to replace them with the perpetual nodes and not with the three-month nodes, for example. Um, also here, um, you see the different price points, and um, uh, I think the difference in terms of the geotechnical sensors I have already I have already highlighted. Okay, and um, one more slide on the uh, support and maintenance part numbers, um, similar to the sensor node part numbers we were just looking at. Um, uh, there will be a change. Um, there are the part numbers available on the left at the moment, and um, they are going to be discontinued also together with the launch, and, and there will be new part numbers available. Um, price is also here, it's in, it's, yeah, it's in US dollars list price, um, and there will be some more information on the on the support and maintenance prices in the following, I think Riley has it, mm -hmm. has it on his list and will mention some more information, right, Riley? Um, Okay, and maybe just one more um, information on the on the availability um, of of the new version. So I think since end of April, beginning of May, um, we made all the 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 T4D part numbers available uh, via the Geospatial iStore, and um, this will also apply to the new version. So if you go to the store and you open the monitoring section and and um, open the office software section, you will find information on on the different editions and on the different sensor node part numbers. And yeah, so basically T4D can be ordered from there, T4D version 6.0. Okay, um, I think with that, this was all information from my side so far. Um, Riley, um, I think um, you can, you will take over. I'm not sure if there is any question we you want, you think yeah, we should answer right away. There's a few we can answer and a few I think we'll leave for a little bit yeah. later. So uh, one regarding T4D field, um, 
because it doesn't have the database storage, the question is, does it need to install the SQL, the Microsoft SQL, um, the executables as well? Um, <clears throat> yes, it installs um, the Express Edition of T4D, um, but um, there will be no time series stored in it. So I think that's that's the answer, yes. So the installation process will be fairly similar. The, insta the installation process will handle this, so you will not need to install uh, any SQL database. So this is all part of the new installer of version 6.0. So there will be um, there will be um, an installation performed, but um, again, um, as far as T4D field is concerned, there are no time series stored in that database. Mm -hmm. So the installation routine is simple, straightforward, and no time series with field. All right, and then Andre asked a question uh, clarifying about the tiers where the monitoring database is included, which is the intermediate and advanced tiers. Uh, are users able to create their own reporting solutions to visualize the data from from those? Um, so if you think about T4D intermediate, I mean, that's, that's actually... Um, that's actually the purpose of of this um, addition of this tier, right? So if you if you have um, all your processing results stored as time series in the database, um, you can access the the database and you can extract all the information, and you can create your own visualization or reporting structure based based on this information which we are storing in that database. So. Um, but there is no web application included with intermediate because this is only part of advanced. So I think if I understand the question correctly, um, this is exactly what intermediate is made for. Yes. And then this is a good question asked by Adrian. So with the new part numbers, what uh, what is expected with existing quotes and tenders that are using the old T40 part numbers? or will be old when, when the uh, version six comes out? Um, so, who, who raised the question? Adrian from Adrian. Optron? Mm. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, um, da, 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 maybe we need to, let's discuss this offline. I mean, this is, can be a bigger discussion. I mean, bottom line is that we will discontinue the current sensor node part numbers and there will be new ones um but i yeah that's that that's a good question mm -hmm. um i would like to to discuss this offline yeah so so adrian uh, if you could send us send christian and i an email and we can we can chat a little bit more in detail on that yeah. and figure out a best path forward and then share that with the the rest of the team on the call yeah, that's, that's, that's a would question be the for way anyone else. Yeah, yeah, great question. Absolutely. All right. Uh, so yeah, feel free. Everyone, keep uh, putting any questions you have in the in the chat window. There, I'm going to move on with the presentation, and then we can do another round of questions here in a little bit of time. So what I wanted to cover was some some of the resources, both of what what we've done recently, what's available, and some of the things that we're working on in in the near future. So, so first of all, I want to cover what's next. Um, with we've talked about T40 version six and what it's bringing. So, so really, we look at who is it for. So, there's the existing and the new customers. So, the new customers and new projects. It's all about better cost control and simplifying the deployment on on a monitoring project. So, before where it may have been kind of a standard process, now is the flexibility with the termed subscription offering in T40, so now we can offer customers an ability to deploy on shorter length projects or also how they bundle the cost of the monitoring system over the over the duration of the project. And then regarding existing customers, for upgrading to T40 Advanced, uh, we mentioned before the entitlement date is July 1st of 2020. So if a customer is under existing warranty, they can upgrade from T4D uh, base to T4D advanced. So they, in, in most cases, they'll be getting uh, quite a bit of benefits out of that upgrade. Uh, 
Uh, we're also going to have a promotion running uh, that will launch in, in tandem with T40 version 6 for existing customers to buy back in on a loyalty program, reinstate or extend their warranty. And this will be available until October 2nd of this year. So just look forward, look for, out for a, uh, a bulletin that'll come out from, from the, uh, the, the global services team that'll have information on that. So I suggest uh, for any of your customers that, that aren't under warranty or need to, to extend it, that, that we do that sooner than later so they can benefit from upgrading to T40 Advanced. And if you're unsure of the warranty uh, eligib eligibility, um, please contact the Monsell support link there, and I'm sure you have that email address. But if not, send us an email, and we can uh, we can assist you there. We mentioned this before, but uh, downloading T4D version six, it'll be available on partners as always. But we'll also have it on our website, which will be coming soon, and I'll talk a bit about that in in a minute. And re release notes will also be available on the web website as well as uh, in the standard download that you get. And we have a plan to create some tutorial videos around the new features and kind of an overview of uh, T4D version six, which will be coming soon on our YouTube page. I uh, wanted to plug out some of the new accessories that are available. So first we, on June 12th, we uh, released a product bulletin announcing the avail availability through the iStore of Trimble Rail accessories on the monitoring page. Uh, so an image on the top right there shows you some of the, the accessories. A lot, a lot has to do with the mounts and enclosures for, for total stations, uh, as well as a, a specialty prism for, for mounting on road surfaces. So uh, check out that product bulletin if you haven't to get some more information, but those are now available on the iStore. And then also stay tuned, we're adding some additional accessories from, from the team at Setup. Uh, some of the examples of what we're, what we're planning to add uh, as, or uh, add availability for are the, the security jail, that you see there on the bottom left or bottom right, uh, as well as enclosures and some specialty mounts. So stay tuned for that and we'll send out a product bulletin when that's, that's available. I mentioned it a few times already, but uh, we have a new Trimble monitoring website and you can all go and check it out now. And I, I suggest you do. And so it's monitoring.trimble.com. And this is uh, a subset of the geospatial.trimble.com website. So you get the same look and feel, uh, but with our monitoring flair. So it's been released. Um, we will be updating and adding things to it uh, over the next little while. And so you can go here to get some product overview solution solutions overview as well as we're cataloging any customer stories and projects we have and and blog posts as well and and in terms of customers our contact page uh, has a kind of funnel that we're bringing towards the sales team so they can follow up with any of those leads from from folks going to this page uh, and so some recent Customer stories uh, that I wanted to to just shout out and, and congratulations to the teams that that put all the hard work to to achieve these. These are not all of the recent ones by any means, but a few of the highlights uh, I wanted to cover. So the uh, sus suspension bridge in China this is a re recent one, but uh, you can see the article on the top right there about how this bridge has been susceptible to vibrations and uh, the uh, the team there is, has got a, a system of T40 and net R9s to to monitor that bridge so really a cool project and then it sends in the the tunnel monitoring project a unique one where we're using a, a local solution with the T Trimble Precision SDK and S series to to help assist in the monitoring of that, that tunnel and then in Switzerland as well with this railway expansion project, uh, combining the uh, the S9 T40 and set up for for a way of monitoring that expansion and construction throughout it. So great work to those teams, and uh, we always love hearing about any projects uh, and success stories that you have with customers. So feel free to reach out to Christian, myself, or Boris if you do have any projects that that you would like to talk about, or or we can create some customer success stories around. 
uh, YouTube channel. This has been out for, for a little while now, but uh, I wanted to make sure that everyone's aware that it's there and available. So we've, we're constantly adding videos to it. We're up to around 30 videos now. And uh, we, we, we hope you'll all subscribe and uh, really build that user base up and, and share it with your customers as well so they can benefit from those, those tutorial, tutorial and how-to videos. And expect to see many more um, over the upcoming months that we'll, that we'll be releasing on that webpage, especially around T40 version 6 as well. And then on social media, uh, we're always active there as well, but uh, I wanted to pitch the Trimble monitoring community. So on the community.trimble.com, we have a monitoring page uh, and I uh, would like to build up the user base on there. If any of you are familiar with some of the other Trimble community pages, it's a great resource for customers and 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 to channel partners to, to kind of share information and ask questions and get answers. So we suggest going on there and uh, getting any of your monitoring customers on there as well. The beta community. So we've we've been running this uh, essentially uh, started in earlier this year. And it's really about driving uh, developments in T4D in the roadmap by by customers and and the and the channel and understanding what are the things that we need to do and, and improve in T4D to make um, to improve the platform. And so it's it's helping us increase that roadmap confidence. But uh, it's been very useful so far. But we don't want to stop with where it's at. We want to grow it and, and continue to improve not only beta group, but also the products, uh, the monitoring products that we're creating. So if you have customers or anyone on your team that would be interested and in, uh, has the, the bandwidth to assist in that beta group, we would more than happy be happy to include them. So feel free to send Christian or I an email after this to, to let us know. Power Hour webinar series. I hope all of you have had the chance to at least uh, attend or see one of the recordings from the past three uh, Power Hour monitoring Power Hours we've done. Uh, they're they're hosted every third Wednesday in a month, so we have one coming up here on July 15th, where we'll talk about uh, geote using geotechnical sensors in T40. Uh, the previous webinars that we've done have kind of covered T4D uh, server as well as web, but uh, we've also talked about uh, total stations and GNSS. So feel free to go on to the geospatial webinar page and see any of those previous recordings as well. And they're good information for your customers as well if they're curious about some of the workflows on setting up a certain type of monitoring scheme. And, and any leads we get out of, out of those uh, webinars we're sharing with the sales team so we can make sure to follow up with uh, anyone who's interested or has questions on, on T4D or monitoring. All right, and some of the upcoming material that we're working on. So one of the things that I'm most excited about is the uh, demo systems that we're setting up on in two locations, one in Germany, one in the US, uh, that will be available for the general public to, to view and, and get an idea of what kind of reports and deliverables are created from a monitoring system using T4D. So stay tuned for those. We'll we'll announce those in probably a product bulletin or in or in the uh, weekly newsletter to let uh, everyone on in the channel know that those are available and a good resource to use when when explaining the benefits to a customer without having to set up a full system uh, a monitoring system. Uh, as well as an overview presentation for T4D. This is talking about really the the benefits of how you can take Go to a customer and explain all of T4D in, in a concise way and target the specific industry and customer uh, with those benefits and, and a competitive advantage. And then working on reference projects and customer segmentation. So understanding, uh, building building specific uh, pr presentations around industries. So whether it's our, our transportation focus with road and rail and what are those unique selling points and kind of the setup of sensors and systems that are typically used on those projects and, and the benefits that come with them. And making sure we, we drive home with those customer segments, the selling points as well. So if, if anyone has any suggestions on, on that, we're more than happy to hear from, from you who have experience in working and deploying these monitoring systems with customers in the different industries. So with that, uh, I think Christian and I have talked enough. So we want to hear from everyone on the call, thoughts and feedback and questions. So I, there is a few more questions that came in, Christian. Yeah. So 
Let me take a um, look here. Yeah. So maybe I can I can add um, some information to my answer from earlier. So Andre, you raised the question about um, the data, and you, in particular, mentioned the monitoring DB. So um, I must add here, and that's a very good question actually. So T4D Intermediate um, will allow you to use the um, the administrative section of the web application. So you can basically use the entire yeah the sensor management, if you will. So basically, we transfer the data from the technical database into the monitoring database, uh, which means the processed results, the information is available in, in a shape that you can easily build on top for this uh, visualization and reporting purposes I, I was talking about earlier. Um, but again, T4D field, uh, nothing is stored, no time series. So I think this is just um, an important information um, in general and in particular to answer this question. Um, so thanks again for this question, André. Mm -hmm. um, and there's one more question I can see from, from Rosen. Um, Rosen, um, you asked um, if there is a customer who has reinstated um, a T4D license at the beginning of this year. Um, uh, will he be available? Uh, will he be able to get the new version 6.0? So if this happened in the beginning of this year, um, the uh, entitlement date um, is at least running until um, beginning of next year. So the answer is yes. Um, you can you can upgrade to version 6.0 in that case. Definitely, yes. Um, yeah. Thanks thanks for that, Rosen. Jacqueline asked a question. Um, will this presentation be available for partners after? So uh, the answer is yes, we'll make this uh, presentation available. Um, we'll put the uh, the PowerPoint up on survey partners. So look, look out for it there in a, in a short while after this presentation. And uh, William asked a question about for upcoming material, is there a estimated date? Unfortunately, there isn't an estimated date, but if there's something out of that, that material I mentioned, or maybe something else that you didn't see, uh, and, and you think it'd be very useful, feel free, William, to send myself and Christian an email on what that is, and if there's any projects they have upcoming, because we can definitely prioritize things if it's if it's gonna really drive um, getting um, Trimble Gear on a monitoring project. Right. Think so that's... I think we've pretty much covered all the questions. I mean, the one from Adrian, we will get back to the group. Yep. But apart from that, I think it's pretty much covered, isn't it, Riley? Yeah, it looks Please. like yeah, it looks like we've covered them all. And so thanks everyone for your time. And uh, I'm really excited about this release of T40. So I hope you all are as well. And uh, I hope you're all doing well in these crazy times as well. You and your families are healthy and safe. And uh, we'll look forward to hearing from all of you in the uh, upcoming times. And, and once again, just a, a plug for the power monitoring power hour next week, next Wednesday. We hope to see you and your customers there. So thanks again, everyone. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining. Bye-bye. See ya.